The future of energy is very uncertain, and there's a million ways it can pan out. In order to get consistent results, I use two metrics, the what and what hour metric. The first is for power, and the other is for energy. I'm not interested in barrels of oil, British thermal units, horsepower, or joules. I want one base metric, and that metric suits me best to convey my message. To get an idea of the scope of our problem, I simplify as much as possible. I start with the primary energy consumption of the world. I want to know how much energy per capita is used. I also want to know the capacity factor of different energy sources. And that's basically all I need to create a possible yet very crude representation of the future. So let's build one. The world is home to 7.6 billion people. OECD hosts about 1.3 billion people. Non-OECD hosts about 6.3 billion people. What about energy consumption? The OECD consumes about 70,000 terawatt hours per year. Non-OECD consumes about 100,000 terawatt hours per year, which is a total of 170,000 terawatt hours per year for the world population. So that's about 53,000 kilowatt hours per person in the OECD and 16,000 kilowatt hours per person in the non-OECD. As for population growth, it is reasonable to suppose that the world will reach up to 10 billion individuals, all of whom will be added to the non-OECD countries. If we maintain a consumption rate of 16,000 kilowatt hours per person, that would mean that we would add roughly 41,000 terawatt hours coming up to 210,000 terawatt hours per year. And that's a conservative estimate. Here's the thing, we want everyone to be healthy and live in happiness and prosperity. People want more energy, that is what it all boils down to. Suppose the people from the non-OECD end up doubling their energy consumption. We would add another 140,000 terawatt hours to a stack of 170 terawatt hours. The thing to note here is that roughly one third of all the primary energy we put into a system ends up being used effectively. So that's your end use argument many people harp about. One of these is Michael Liebreich, for instance. He is basically the head of Bloomberg New Energy Finance. He says, primary energy is not a smart metric to use. End use is a smart metric to use. I agree and I disagree with this assertion. First of all, you don't really know how efficient our future energy economy will be. It is very unsafe to assume that we can electrify everything. But let's assume we can. We now have a primary energy target of 310,000 terawatt hours per year in the old situation, accounting for a doubling in non-OECD overall prosperity. Suppose we can cut in at 66% efficiency rather than 30%. That would mean that instead of having to consume 310,000 terawatt hours per year, we would need 145,000 terawatt hours per year. What would it take to create that amount of end use energy? At a 90% capacity factor, 19,000 1 gigawatt reactors. At 35% capacity factor, 47,000 gigawatts of wind. At a 25% capacity factor, 95,000 gigawatts of solar. I suspect that this won't be enough. I don't think we will be able to decarbonize all energy consumption, and I don't think we can ditch the use of chemical fuels. 
So this is just to show you how big of a mountain we must scale. Just for reference sake, at current build speeds, none of these 100% scenarios would even be remotely feasible within the next centuries. I'm not even talking about decades here, it's centuries. Current build rates are not even close enough to what they ought to be. And with that, I leave you. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.